Hey guys, welcome to my September plan with me video. This month I had no idea what I was going to do until, I don't know, like two minutes before I started. I had all these theme ideas that I was going through in my head, but just none of them seemed right. I wanted to do fall, but I kind of want to save fall for October. So then I was trying to decide and I was thinking like flowers and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. I just was doodling on a piece of paper. That's usually how I plan things out. Just doodle and write um, until something comes to mind. Um, but I wanted to kind of let you guys in on how I actually do pick out my themes usually. Um, I use Pinterest all the time and I will search for certain doodles or I will just go in the art section and start looking for stuff and then usually something comes to me that I look at and I'm like oh yeah that's what I want to do and that's what happened here um, this cover page is heavily inspired by an image that I saw on Pinterest I will leave the link down below so that you can view the original picture and I will try to find the artist's name so that I can also include that um, but what I ended up going with was a bakery theme um <laughs> lord knows that i really like donuts and pastries and cupcakes but i really more than i like them actually i i just like to draw them um and i like the colors associated with them last month i went very heavy kate spade inspired and there was a lot of pink and i decided to stick with my theme all month long for all my weeklies and everything and i almost got burnt out on it so i probably won't do that this month and if you guys are the same it you don't have to stick with your theme any longer than you want to remember that it is your journal and you can do whatever you want so if you start with a monthly theme and then you just are like man i'm done with this like i don't want to do it then don't do it go with whatever you want to do so anyways i'm do just doing a bakery theme and so all my monthly pages will have the same theme but i'm not sure that all my weekly pages will um, the other thing I did with this monthly that you're seeing is um, I recently got contacted by Faber Castell and they wanted to send me some of their products. They didn't tell me anything that I had to do with them, um, but they probably wanted me to post to Instagram, which I did. Um, but I decided what a better way to test out the products that they sent me than to do my entire monthly setup with Faber Castell. So I used all of their pens. I Right now I'm using their extra small fine point pen, so that's their Pit Artist pen. Um, and so far I really like them. If you guys have followed me for a long time, there was a time that I had bought some Pit Artist pens myself and I wasn't a huge fan of them after like a month because they died faster than other fine line pens that I've tried. But so far I am loving the consistency of these pens when I did this. Um, they write super smooth. The ink is, it just flows really, really nice. I only ran into one issue where I was using the small tip and after I was done using it for a couple minutes, it really started to come out really heavy. So the line was a lot thicker than it had to be. But other than that, I really like them. Um, and then here what I'm doing is I am using these gelatos. So these came in the package that Faber-Castell sent me and they are they remind me of a tube of lipstick crossed with like a crayon but they are water soluble and you can use them in a ton of different ways so what I decided to do was just go with um, like watercolor um, because I really wanted a very soft effect here um, and it did exactly that I'm so impressed with how this turned out I don't usually do watercolor in my journal anymore since getting my newer Nuna um, because the newer Nuna does not have the same page quality as the old one and it does leak through and bleed through so I was a little hesitant but um, this method worked really well and it caused a very very slight amount of wrinkling in my paper that you will see when I flip the page but aside from that it went really well so it came with quite a few colors and some of them are metallic so I decided to do the trim on the actual building with this gold color and I think it is absolutely beautiful and there are other ways to use them too um, the set that I got with the gelatos comes with a little spritzer bottle and the other night I was playing around so you can chop these up and then mix them with water and then it comes with a spritzer so you can make um, watercolor spritz that you could use to decorate a page or like put a really fun artistic background down on a page but I just decided to paint 
Um, normally I did use my own paintbrush because I wasn't a huge fan of the paintbrush that they sent. Um, I did use theirs on the top just because it was thicker, but for these little fine details, um, I did not want to do that. So I'm just using a paintbrush I had on hand with their paints and these did last me the entire time that I was doing this setup. Um, just a little FYI, I don't know about everybody else, but this video originally was about two hours long and it was condensed into 15 minutes. So um, that just goes to show like that these are not always what they seem. Um, so this month I did decide to stick with the Dutch door theme for my monthly again. So if you watched last month's video, you know what that is, but I'm gonna cut the page vertically not this page, the following page vertically. Um, and then I'm able to see my calendar, my habit tracker, my goals, different things all at the same time. Um, so instead of making a large calendar, I just decided to do a vertical calendar. That way I can see it even when I cut my page. Um, but I also do put in a very small, like actual calendar because I need that view just um, for me personally, it works a lot better for me. So um, I did that too. I always mark off where the page meets so that I know where to draw because I like things to look seamless like they were supposed to um, fit exactly. So the title here, um, it isn't going to disappear when I fold the page over and then the calendar will go to the right of that and it will be gone once you fold that center page over. And I'm really enjoying this setup. I might continue to do this um, for a couple months because my habit tracker does fit so well on that little half center page with the Nuna at least um, in a bigger notebook with larger spacing. It might not work as well, but in this notebook it works really, really nice and I do love being able to see everything all at once. So here I'm just continuing on with the color scheme that I originally picked out. Um, so I took the pink and I decided that I was going to color in the weekends and honestly, I don't know why I did that. Um, working from home, I don't always have a set schedule and weekends definitely are not my time off. Um, but now that my daughter is starting school, I suppose that that may change and I will probably take more weekend time off to be with her. But my husband never has weekends off. So what you're seeing here is I'm just drawing out the title for my habit tracker. In the past, I've changed up my habit tracker a number of times, but I really like the one that I had going in August, so I haven't changed it at all. I am doing exactly the same thing. So um, along the top, I'm just using little tiny doodles, and for that, I'm gonna use the extra small point pit artist pen. Um, because the spaces in the Nuna are so tiny. Um, so my doodles are almost, they're probably unreadable to anyone that doesn't watch my video or isn't me. Um, they probably don't know what they mean because they're itty bitty and they don't really represent much. They're more like little tiny shapes that just barely represent what it is that I'm tracking. But I do like this method because I love having the vertical habit tracker. I remember using a Loish term and the standard way to do your habit tracker in a notebook like that is to flip your notebook horizontally and draw your habit tracker that way because it fits better. But in the Nuna, because the spacing is so small, it does allow me to do a vertical habit tracker. And you can in a Loish term too, if you use this method where you use um, very small icons to represent what you are um, tracking. And speaking of, that kind of brings me to my next point. So I don't know about you guys, but I am already starting to think about 2019 and what I will be doing for my bullet journal. Um, I have had the opportunity to um, try out one of Baron Fig's notebooks. It's the Confidant and it's the plus size because I have really got used to using a larger notebook with the Nunas and I am loving it. I think that the page quality is better than Nuna, which absolutely breaks my heart because I did want to stay with them, but um, until they change their paper quality, I don't think that I will be using them again. Um, so I will be using the Baron Fig notebook in 2019. So let me know what you guys are doing for your 2019 bullet journal or what you're going to use for yours. 
Um, so now in case any of you guys were wondering what I actually track in my bullet journal, if you haven't watched my previous videos, I will give you the quick rundown. So it starts on the left and we're going to go um, workout, which is represented by a tiny dumbbell. And then we have yoga and tracking calories, which I change up every month, like tracking calories, eating healthy, but I have a really hard time tracking calories. I hate it. So I'm trying to push myself to do that. The next one is no sweets. And then the little target thing is filling in all the rings on my Apple watch, which represents stand, exercise time and move calories. Um, the next one is if I wrote a blog post, and then if I posted to Instagram, if I wrote 500 words that day, skincare, dental hygiene, if my kids took a bath, personal development, intimacy, no spend, cooking at home, and actually using my journal. So I always like to see how things pan out throughout the month. Certain months are really good for me. I look back at my habit trackers all the time. Um, just to kind of see how I'm changing or what's going on in my life. And like in August, I have been completely inactive. I have barely even worked out, let's see, like five times as of today. Um, and then I've done yoga a bunch. I'm kind of transitioning more into doing a lot more yoga. But um, if you would look at my bullet journal and my habit tracker from six months ago, I worked out pretty much like 30 days out of the month. So it's a big change and I like to do that and just kind of see what's happening. Um, I know a lot of people just do habit trackers just to kind of see what's going on that month or in that moment. But for me, um, it really helps me look at the past and analyze like how I'm doing with my goals or why things are the way they are or certain changes that are happening in me. I really do like to look back and almost see it as a statistic. So um, without rambling any further, my next page or half page I should say over here is going to be my goals and weekly check-in. So I started the weekly check-in last month and I really like it. It kind of gives me that accountability of like every Sunday I have to write down how I'm doing. And so for my check-ins for August, a lot of what I wrote down was like, I'm not working out, I'm working a lot, you know, I'm prepping my daughter to go to kindergarten. But it's really just a place for me to reflect on my week and look at myself honestly and be able to say, okay, this is what I should change next week. Um, I am a very goal-driven person. I think most people are, especially once they start bullet journaling, they really start to see their goals and what they want to accomplish with their life or with just this week or with their home or their career. Um, you can set your goals for anything that you need to that is a priority to you. Um, but I did notice that more people do become more goal focused once they start bullet journaling because it does give you what you need to achieve your goals. It gives you a space to write them down or put them into a visual context. Um, some people are much more visually driven, so creating bar graphs or something like that can definitely be beneficial. So this last page that I'm doing, this center insert thing that kind of goes between my calendar and my goals is my monthly statistics. And I've incorporated this now for a couple months and I've changed it every month just because I either, when I first started, I realized that I had way too many things that I was tracking. And then the next month I realized that I didn't have as many as I wanted to be tracking. Um, these are mostly going to be related to my exact goals. So that's going to be a lot of work and health and fitness. Um, you could do this and you could track whatever you wanted um, statistic wise, but I do things that are mainly related to health and fitness and my work. So I track like my productivity for a day and um, I track my weight daily and if I don't it's okay um, I, I like to clarify this that there are some days that I don't I forget to weigh myself or I don't count my calories um, and for those days I just put a little horizontal line on there um, life happens we can't always be perfect um, if you look at anybody's habit tracker you know that um, it's not ever a hundred percent filled in um, that's always the goal usually but um, it doesn't work that way so I just track things and um, I fill them in as I can but I don't really push myself to um, fill them in every single day if I can't or if it starts to become an issue like 
Uh, some people don't want to weigh themselves every day. It can become almost obsessive. I try not to weigh myself every day, but I did want to include it on here. So I might weigh myself twice a week and then just put horizontal lines on the rest of the days that I don't weigh myself. So here's exactly what I track on my statistics page. I track weight, my daily steps, which is calculated by my Apple Watch, um, my overall health as far as food is concerned. Um, so I just use like a, like a meter to do that. So I'll draw a line and then fill it in depending on how healthily I ate that day. And then I have a mood tracker. This is much different. I just literally write in what I felt my mood was that day. And then I track productivity, the hours of sleep that I got, um, my daily workouts and my calories. So that wraps up my statistics and actually that wraps up my entire monthly. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys again soon.